Now we have Mr. Jose Valiente. He works in Industrial Cyber Security Center. And that's the question we wanted to propose to you for the next minutes. Help us to find the most adequate way to have these two processes hand in hand uh, in industrial companies. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the organization of this uh, industry sec conference to uh, having invited our um, Industrial Cybersecurity Center. Thank you for being here. It's a great honor because after listening to all the talks this morning and after having traveled from in many countries and we've celebrated in our center even th more than 30 events of uh, industrial cybersecurity, I'd like to to congratulate you because you've brought here industrial organizations that tell us how they've, they've behaved, how they've organized their cybersec system. It's a great pleasure and an honor. This morning, <coughs> Alvaro said that uh, until there's no incident or until there's a new regulation, nobody does anything. Well, two days ago, I met various professionals I uh, was mm, given a course on s industrial cybersecurity, and there were three operators of critical um, infrastructures. They were affected by the new regulation, and other industries were there, and they had incidents. Last year, it, it cost them 300 million euros. When these events happen, you uh, get aware of the importance of cybersec. It's very difficult to convince people without having, have, having had serious events. In, sometimes your company m might disappear after an incident. This morning you spoke about uh, availability, integrity, and how cybersecurity and safety um, must go hand in hand. And now I'd like to talk about quality. As the title said, a perfect marriage between uh, quality and cybersecurity. When we speak about quality, we speak about integrity. I was uh, telling Patchy that uh, 25 years ago, I b bought a car and I had to travel 2,000 kilometers uh, to, to, to test and run the car. Today, components are of very high quality. What happens with technology if it doesn't work? Maybe those components, those parts that are very high quality, can be defective. So we have to worry about integrity. And technology has a, a major role in industrial uh, organizations. We have to take into account their safety, their soundness, their health, and their quality. Cybersecurity today is not about cyber attacks. It's about securing and guaranteeing uh, the quality of production. This is the this is the scenario that we live in today. Maybe you, if you are happy in this scenario, there's a global world with a high level of competition. Your competitors today are not uh, in your country. They might be in Colombia, in Malaysia. Today, markets have opened up so much that we have competitors all over the place. So there's other great great opportunities, not just competitors because we're now selling to people we never imagined. But we need to be aware of our scenarios and our context. Today, organizations want to get into digital transformation. People talk a lot about that. But really, what companies are doing is a business and corporate uh, transformation. They are now changing their, their model, their business model, because it's not valid anymore. It, 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 this business models worked fine for 30 years. Why am I going to change it? Because I need it. This is a new scenario. And technology it plays an important role to change your model. You, in fact, your customers have changed. Nobody comes to buy our products uh, personally. They buy us from uh, many places in the world. We need to be flexible. We need to adapt. If there's no adaptation, unfortunately, uh, we won't be in the market. This uh, shows what technology means. IT exists with mainframes. IBM, you remember. 
IBM mainframe is what is this? this technology has 60 years. Industrial technologies, OT, is younger, around 50 years. The first PLC was created in 69. But technology, the IT has uh, evolved and OT has evolved, but there's a moment in time when these two technologies have uh, intersected, they are in more and more integrated, they are communicating. If I ha need to make a prediction, I have, I, I do need IT to make decisions. This integration is uh, there since the half of the year 2000 in many organizations. This is a firewall. The first firewall in IT environments was uh, s created in, in the 90s. The first OT firewall was created in 2006. Why? Because that's when many organizations which had integrated the systems realized that they had to protect their communications. And this is growing. Integration is m bigger between OTs and ITs. It's the smart industrial that is uh, taking the place of the rest. Quality. Quality is present in industry for more than 20 years. We have uh, ISO 9001 and certifications all over the place for many years. But this was present also uh, certified with uh, OD and, and operation security since 2005. IEC 62443. It was ISA 99, and they started in 2004. So. It's there for a long time, but we've really worried about industrial cybersecurity for just five years. The most advanced system has just five years of age. So today we need multidisciplinary uh, experts in our center. We have experts. They know about safety. They know about industrial engineering, uh, manufacturing, and many subject matters and in order to elaborate our documents. Otherwise, if you have no multidisciplinary uh, knowledge, you won't solve the problem. So you need multidisciplinary experts. I was very jealous this morning. There was this couple, the industrial organization and the, the expert here. And I called this person. I don't know if you know him. Juan Roch from Mercadona, CEO of Mercadona. And I called him, but he said, I'm very busy. Well, I, I'll tell you about what happened. Mercadona is the company with uh, highest um, uh, turnover in Spain, and it's expanding. It, Mercadona is doing the digital transformation. For me, it's business transformation. And who's doing the digital transformation in Mercadona? in the best hands possible, uh, her daughter, Juana. Juana Roich, she's leading the digital transformation in the company. How much are they going to spend for this digital transformation in Mercadona? How much? Eight billion euros. Eight billion euros. Mercadona is, knows what they're doing to spend such a, an amount of money. It's about total quality management. You know what this model is? Quality. Quality in the employees, quality in providers, suppliers, in society, and the capital. Where's technology quality there? Where? Where's technology quality? So the model in Mercadona is not complete. It's not comprehensive because they don't include technology as the focus of quality. 120 inter-suppliers, uh, inter uh, manufacturers, 220 factories in Spain. That's Mercadona. To all those manufacturers, the, the, they, go, they uh, are subject to uh, quality audits. I was visiting one of the providers, and they ju were just doing a quality audit. But quality for Mercadona is important. But quality. If you really need to have a total quality model, it has to include cybersecurity. I'm going to demonstrate why. Masayon SA, I don't know if you've seen this presentation. Masayon SA today is the inter-supplier of Mercadona. 
Mazayon doesn't exist. It's fictitious. But this is based on real, a real case. Mazayon manufactures uh, biscuits with a factory in Toledo and a bis and, um, office in Madrid. It's normal. You, you have your factories so, and your headquarters in another place. This organization in 2017 um, made 20 million uh, boxes, 20 euros per box. And it exports to Latin America, to Europe, and to the Middle East. And 132 employees work for Mazayon, most of them in the factory, and the, the rest in the, in the office. So the CEO, general director, and the various branches. The turnover, 20 million euros distributed in these countries, especially in Russia, 50%. Maybe this factory would have been built in Russia if this company had known about this. This is the uh, uh, the uh, manufacturing processes in Masayon. So the raw materials come in, the, the silos, and from the silos they go to the mixing, molding, and it never gets to the uh, to the um, oven. In fact, it goes to the packaging uh, system, and there's uh, an automatic warehousing system, and then it's distributed. What about technologies? In Masayun, we have three production lines. They are automated. They, uh, um, in fact, these machines are made by various manufacturers. They don't have just one brand with all the PLCs, etc. Each small process is made by one different manufacturer, and that's a great complexity. They have Siemens technology, Schneider, Rockwell, automation, and the control room uh, where everything is supervised, and the office. It's a mess system. It's, on, it's a cloud system. So you have to be on the cloud. Where? Well, in the cloud, they are able to analyze the industrial organization data plus the information coming from the ERP systems and to improve the manufacturing process at the end of the day. They have an ERP, which is very specific. From ERP, all the manufacturing orders uh, are sent. Someone said that this system is the heart. In Matsayon, ERP is the real heart. Because without ERP, if it doesn't work, well, they could manufacture the, the biscuits, but then everything stops because they don't get the orders. But let's see Matsayon architecture. They have the offices with the ERP servers. They could be in another data center, but they have it in the same office. And they also have a supplier that connects through the internet for the tailor maintenance, remote maintenance. It's quite typical. But they have different providers because they have different technologies. And all these providers, those suppliers, connect through their ERP. And then they have the systems, process controllers, efficiency controllers, and for safety, and a control room. What incidents happened there? And any ideas about what incidents could happen and how this uh, affected quality and the business? Well, I'm, I'm going to give you the answers. Incidents in this factory at the end of last year. The first one, the most serious one, 25 cases of intoxication in Russia because there were three batches that were in bad, uh, bad state. So, so the boxes had to, had to be removed, and the Ministry of Health in Russia called uh, the Ministry of Health in Spain because there's, there was food poisoning, and the, the, the factory had to stop. If the factory stops, you are not doing anything, and you're losing money, but well, you're losing your reputation because it was, it was in, on the press, on the media. So this could have made Mazayon disappear. Marspen, uh, Marspen biscuits need to be uh, temperature controlled. Marspen. <coughs> Uh, um, uh, you need time to, to make marspen, so they had to start everything again, mm, to run it again for three days. So there was a failure, but it was an intermittent um, uh, fail, failure because some of the biscuits burnt down and had to restart the system. So five um, 
failing batches and they had to stop for two days. But they had to solve it. Well, in fact, it's solved alone by itself because they didn't know the root cause. What happens? Maybe this is going to happen again. Two days downtime, downtime and uh, financial losses. And the, the, the last, um, another incident was an electrical failure. But they weren't ready. But the three first cases are incidents that are affecting quality. Food poisoning. The um, freezers uh, due to the electrical um, failure, the oven failure, are these technological incidents? How can we know? Are, are they in technological incidents? First, we need a forensic uh, audit. This is an investigation to know if all that happened there is related to a technologic uh, incident. Let's make a diagnosis. Something else happened? In our center, we have a catalog of services and suppliers for industrial cybersecurity solutions. Some of them are here, but there are many companies uh, who can help you do that, uh, this kind of diagnosis. In our center, we published two documents to carry out this diagnosis and this audit. Good practices for diagnosis. And another, it's a tool, it's a document with guidelines how to mm, conduct a forensic analysis in an industrial setting. Conclusions of the audit. Well, everything was checked. And then, in fact, it was a, an attack directed from Russia. There was a Russian person once in, my, in the room, and, and, and he said, why are you always giving Russian examples? Well, it's very difficult to uh, identify the attackers. That's one of the great problems that we have here. A directed attack is, you know, where is the infrastructure from which this attack was sent, but where exactly? China, uh, Russia, or Toledo? So one of the stations in the, the office was compromised, and from there, all the sabotage was done and I changed the ERP formulation, the, con the Schneider controller was reprogrammed and the S7 by Siemens were, was reprogrammed too. These things happen. This is fictitious, but it's based on, on real uh, facts. How to solve this? Well, to seg we need to segment. People spoke about segmentation, but the the general director, is he going to sleep at night? No, because he realized that the incident came through here, but it, in fact, you can access from many different sites and locations. So this is not a project where we're going to solve a specific problem or a bug. It's a whole management system that needs to be put into place. Unfortunately, Matsayon, uh, went bankrupt and they closed down. What can we do to resist and to um, be defended against these high impact incidents? Well, you can pray. That's the quick uh, way out, the quick fix. But I think the solution might must start with a person there ahead of this service, somebody who's responsible of managing this risk. Here we have three people. They spoke about how they manage or how they mm, tackle cybersecurity in their organizations. I'd like to know if these people, apart from managing that, if they manage more other, uh, many other things, I'm sure of that, how much time they uh, give to cybersecurity, half an hour a day, three hours a week. You need a person, a, a person in charge with the support of the management, a person with resources. If you're alone, and this happens. In the course I was uh, referring to uh, for due days, there was an, uh, a critical infrastructures operator and the team of people. He had I, from IT and OT. In fact, it was just himself. He was alone. This has advantages. No conflicts in the team. No conflict. An internal conflict only. So you spoke about big companies, SMEs, etc. I'm talking about uh, this operator. He's alone. He has to do everything, and it's a single person. But he's surrounded of uh, suppliers and specialists and experts. A small company cannot uh, avoid uh, managing this risk because the company might disappear. 
What do we need? Knowledge. You need to, tra to get trained. You need expertise from other experts, but especially you need to manage this because this is another process. In quality, we have a general uh, management system for quality, but we need another system to manage cybersecurity in our OT environments. Don't get mad about this. One of the speakers said, common sense. It's fine, but you ha have common sense not all the times. It's not permanent. So you use good practice, methodologies, guidelines. We, because everything is based on bad experiences of other experts. These people know more than you. Of course, your common sense is good, but you need a guidance. In our center, we, in 2016, we published a guide that helps you to manage uh, OT technologies risks. But it's not just guidelines. It's uh, you Here you have models and uh, case studies, and um, up to 60% of the cases are covered. Risk analysis, training and awareness planning, everything is covered. And this guide is, uh, didn't appear because we have common sense. It's based on standards, ISO 27001, and it, IEC 62443. The difference is that you will take uh, less time in doing all this because we have templates. We have to be fast. If you're not fast enough, you're going to disappear. In our Industrial Cybersecurity Center, this year we launched we opened a school. It's the professional school for industrial cybersecurity. We, uh, we have many guides, but we help professionals to use the guides and the guidelines so that they, it's easier for them to um, apply cybersecurity in all aspects, not only for networks, not only for applications, but also for people, etc. Here, there's a calendar of the dates. Every Monday, we have a workshop. Some of the teachers who are part of this school are here today. To be smart, that's the last slide. Be smart, we're talking about smart factory industry 4.0, smart cars, smart everything. Are we smart enough? I was congratulating you for the organization of this conference. We organized in March one e event, the Lab of Industry, and we wanted to share experiences, so it's fine. Just like we, you did it here. It was fantastic. And one of the participants said to us, well, I I heard so many things, but I can't I can't memorize everything. And you know a lot because you're mature, but we cannot organize events with a very high maturity level because otherwise many people would be lost because people are not as smart as you. So it's very difficult to organize this type of events. So we try to organize conferences and events, but also meetings. Meetings where engineering people sit down to speak about design problems so that they uh, tell us how to act. And we have also manufacturers sitting together with these uh, consultants. And it's a very difficult task. It's, it's a hard task. We have a lot to do. But with this type of events, I think we are making progress. So thank you very much for everything.